Hey, thanks for checking this out. You know, a big part of my role at Global Eye is motivating the photographers to do the grunt work it takes to build a viable photography business. The truth is that the photographers we accept all have the skills required to create great marketable images. And our platform is very good at positioning those images in front of buyers and generating sales. The real challenge is often just getting the photographer to do that initial work of feeding their images into the system. I can only imagine it must be so much harder for photographers at other libraries, but we'll get to that shortly. Okay, the one thing the photographers hate with a passion is the amount of computer time it takes to prepare high-res images for their stock library. Since stock photography has gone online, the workload for photographers has increased dramatically. And what makes image prep time so incredibly frustrating is the knowledge that many of the images you spend time on are never going to sell anyway. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can cut your workload in this area by 80% or more. In fact, the average photographer can save up to 300 hours a year with one small change to their business model. And it all starts with the old 80-20 rule. Now, I'm not sure if you've come across this before, but the 80-20 rule is like a magic ratio that applies to so many different business situations, including stock photography. I first heard it used in a business sense when a presenter showed data that for most businesses, 80% of your sales are probably going to come from about 20% of your customers. He also made a very convincing argument that for most business owners, 80% of their revenue came from 20% of their efforts, which also means that 80% of our time is probably being wasted on busy work. Anyway, over the years I've seen this ratio repeated over and over in every aspect of our own business and also in the businesses of our member photographers. In particular, I've seen two distinct 80-20 patterns play out over and over for stock photographers. Which photographers at a library actually get the sales and then which photos actually sell? I touched on the first one in the previous presentation. In the most stock libraries, 80% of the sales are going to go to about 20% of the contributing photographers. So conversely, 20% of the sales are shared among the remaining 80%. So it's great if you're in the 20%, but not so flashy if you're on the 80. Anyway, as we showed in that video, that sort of ratio would be a major problem at Global Eye. So we put a lot of time and effort in to ensure the sales are spread around for as many of our photographers as possible by giving you a complete business package so you can basically take the luck factor out of it and make sales happen for yourself. But that's getting a bit sidetracked. The second pattern has to do with what images actually sell. It's incredibly consistent right across the stock library and also when we start looking at individual photographer sales. And the truth is it's probably closer to a 90-10 ratio in that 10% of images account for about 90% of the sales. So that means 90% of the images in any stock library are probably never going to sell, ever. And 90% of the images in any photographer's collection are never going to sell. Now some people will argue and find exceptions, but most people who have been in stock photography for any length of time will acknowledge the truth of that. It's not about bad images or non-commercial content, but simply the numbers gain that stock is coupled with the X factor. In most situations, a good photographer will capture multiple marketable images. A planned shoot might generate hundreds of good images, and even a fleeting photo op might still generate a dozen or more great photos. Unfortunately, when the stock photography buyer comes looking for that specific subject, chances are they'll only need one or two images. When the next buyer comes along needing similar material, there's a very good chance that whatever caught the eye of the first buyer will also appeal to the second buyer. And they'll pick the same image. And that goes on and on and on. And you'll see near identical images where one never sells and one sells a dozen times. So even if the subject sells extremely well, chances are the sales will be concentrated on a small percentage of the available images. Here at Global Eye, some of our busiest photographers have well over 10,000 images online. But the reality is 9,000 of those images will probably never sell. Of the 1,000 that do sell, many will be multiple sellers. And that's just the nature of the game. I've seen the same ratio apply to long-time pros and complete newbies. Photographers with 20,000 images on file and others with less than 100 in their collection. Most of the images submitted just aren't going to sell. So for maximum efficiency and maximum camera time, it makes sense to minimise the time you actually spend preparing images on spec. Unfortunately, it is extremely difficult to pick which photos are going to sell and which ones won't. In fact, the very first image we ever sold almost didn't make it into the library. In those days, everything was still film originals, and we were trying to build up the numbers a bit faster, basically because we were promoting a photo library with... I don't think we even had a 1,000 images then, so every image counted. So anyway, we used to scan and upload a batch of images for each new member when they joined. This one image was kind of plain, very low contrast, and I was really struggling to get a good scan from the slide. There were a few 
shots from the same shoot and in my mind they're all pretty ordinary and I really couldn't imagine anyone ever using them. I was about ready to give up, decided to give it one last try. Unfortunately I got something that was fairly usable. So I loaded that up and that one actually sold a couple of weeks later. It was the very first sale for that photographer and the very first sale for Oz Images. It was a similar story with our best ever sale. Around the same time I was pulling my hair out trying to scan this really dark sunset silhouette shot and I was ready to give up. In the end I went looking, I found a bit of advice on one of the ph photography forums and I gave it one last try and got something that wasn't brilliant but wasn't too bad. So I loaded that one up and it sold a little while later for well, five figures to a US credit card company. And the bonus for the photographer was that at that stage the Aussie dollar was about 60 cents so he pretty much doubled his money when he brought it back to Australia. So I guess the message there is most images won't sell but pretty much any image can sell so tread very carefully. Stock photography is a numbers game and all things being equal, the photographer with the bigger collection will get more exposure, more leads and more sales. So you really can't afford to limit your submissions. Instead you should really work out a way to limit the time you spend on submitting images. The good news for you is at Global Eye we've taken that into consideration and at Global Eye we only need low res previews. Think about that one for a minute. All you need to start selling is a low res preview. You can then prepare the high res file and take your time with it when the image is sold and when you know you're going to get paid for it. If you've ever made a submission to a traditional stock library, you'll know how time consuming it can be to prep 100 or more high res images. It can easily take half an hour to properly clean up a high res file. And what's even worse is when you spend all those hours at your computer only to have the library reject half of them. Well, at Global Eye, you handle sales so you can prep your high res images as they're sold. You get an order, you prep the image and send it, you get paid, and the job is done. Even if it takes you half an hour to clean up the image and send it, you're still four and a half hours ahead. When you think about the long-term numbers you need for stock, and realistically if you're getting into stock you want to be thinking thousands rather than hundreds, then when you think about how much prep time would go into those, then our previews only approach makes a lot of sense. Probably won't surprise you then that our photographers tend to build up their collections faster than they would at any other high-res library. Most of our photographers will spend about two to five minutes on each preview image. If they're working in batches of similar images, they tell us it's a couple of minutes each. If they're prepping a mixed batch, it can take a little longer. And ideally, we encourage our members to try and load at least a thousand images a year. So at three minutes an image, they're looking at 50 hours on spec editing work over the year. That's about one hour a week working on images that may or may not sell. When you start looking at the other libraries though, those that need high res submissions, it would work out closer to 500 hours or almost 10 hours a week over the year or 12 and a half weeks full time work with no guarantee that the images will ever sell, assuming that they're even accepted into the library. So it should be plain to see that submitting to a traditional hands free stock library is actually going to require more work, up to 10 times more work. When you also consider that these libraries are charging 50% commissions on your sales, you have to ask yourself where the value is. You're literally doing 10 times more work for half the money. So I'm hoping by now you can see the Global Eye approach not only saves you serious money, but also saves you a massive amount of time and frees you up so you can get back behind the camera. After all, that's what we got into this for. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with us through till the end. I hope you got some good information out of that. Even if you don't decide to do anything with it, Global Eye, I hope it gives you a better idea of how to value your time and where to focus your energies for the best results. If you haven't already done so, I do encourage you to register at Global Eye and look over our photographer's information package. You'll find a link just below this video. If you have any questions at all, please do let me know. Thanks.